أعز من المشتري جميع بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على عهدك وعليك ما استطعت أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبوء بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him and we ask His help And we seek His forgiveness And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil inside us And from the evil consequences of our bad actions Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to go astray, no one can guide I testify that there is no get to be worshipped but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our master, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. InshaAllah we'll continue the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Last time we talked about some events that happened before the bi'tha of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam participated in like Harb al-Fujur and also Hilf al-Fudul. And we talked about the significance of Hilf al-Fudul and how and or why it is a, a medal of honor in the chest or a tag of honor, a crown of honor in the head of, of every Muslim. Um, today, inshallah, we're going to talk about, you know, the revelation, the, begin, the beginning of the revelation. And before that, though, I would like to talk a little bit about the glad tidings, things, things that happened before the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu the glad tidings, the news uh, about the upcoming prophet in the scriptures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already has sent down. And these uh, scriptures are the Torah and the Injil. And I'm not really interested to study the Torah or the Injil in order to find out whether the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned there or not. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already, he says that in the Quran. That it's already mentioned in the Torah and mentioned in the Injil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ They know him very well, as much as they know their children. They know him. They know the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So for those of you who would like to go, go ahead and research and read and you know, try to find something. And it's out there. You know, there's a lot of videos, a lot of YouTube videos about that. You know, uh, this is if you are interested, you know, but what I'm going to be talking about is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran about the hadith, authentic hadith that took place before the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just like the, this woman, uh, Salma, and she said that uh, she had a rabbi who was, he was a neighbor, uh, and then this man came out and, and he said, uh, he started talking to them about the reckoning, resurrection, about, you know, al-hisab, about the day of Yom al-Qiyamah. He talked to them about hellfire, paradise, and he talked also about the promised, or the chosen prophet, the seal of the prophets. And then she, she said to him, there is, it's, it's impossible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bring back all these bones together and... There is nothing, there is no such thing called resurrection of reckoning. And then the man starts, subhanAllah, he starts to talk about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, starts talking about the description of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in their book. And then, uh, and then he said, this man, he said to her, and there are people who believe in him. There are people among us who believe in him. And those who don't believe in him, they will be out of arrogance and stubbornness and evil and jealousy. And we talked already about Abdullah ibn Salam and how he was, you know, an knowledgeable person from, you know, previous tradition. And when he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Wallahi in the huwa bi This is not a face of a liar. When he looked at the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Alladheena tabi'oona rasoola nabiyya al-ummi. Those who follow the Messenger, the Prophet, al nabi al-ummi, the one who can... Uh, uh, neither read nor uh, write. الَّذِي يَجِدُونَهُ مَكْتُوبًا عِنْدَهُمْ فِي الطَّوَرَاتِ الْإِنْجِيلِ Who they find that his name or description is written there in the Torah and the Injil. يَأْمُرْهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ يَنْهَاهُمْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ 
he he in, he encourage him or command him to do good in doing good and forbid the evil and then wa yuhillu lahum at-tayyibat and made the lawful things halal for them wa yuharimu alayhim al-khaba'ith made unlawful things or evil things haram for them wa yada' anhum israhum and he will put away their heavy burden وَالْأَغْلَالَ الَّتِي كَانَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ And also he will release the yokes. And the, the scholar, they said, الْأَغْلَالَ and, and all these things, the burden, the heavy burdens that these people had, you know, how they used to prohibit things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really allowed and made it lawful for them. And how they used to be like uh, hard upon themselves. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, بِعِثْتُ بِالْحَنَفِيَةِ samha The release here, they have a burden that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was sent to remove it from people who were who came before us. It's just like bring him to the to the middle path, the easy religion, the easy way. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, when he sent uh, Sayyidina Mu'adh ibn Jabal and others to Yemen, he says to them, Bashira wala tunafira. He said to them, give good news and do not cause people to flee. Make things make things easy and do not make it hard on people. And he says, I was sent with the, just easy religion, just easy religion, you know, the middle the middle path. So, uh, so uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Allah subhanahu wa taala said in the Quran that he is mentioned in these books. So you can just believe in that and just take it the way it is, you know. It's in the Quran, and if you would like to read more. And you know, do some research or something, watch some videos on YouTube, go ahead and do. You know. But personally I am I'm not interested to study these books in order to find whether the Prophet Muhammad is there or not. It's he's there. He's there. It's just like the brothers and sisters who, who like to find, you know, a, a scientific reason for everything. Oh, that's fine. But I'm not interested in that either. You know, because the Quran is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, it's a divine book. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said is good for you. It's good. Dalikum khayrun lakum in kuntum ta'alam. This is good for you if you actually, if you know. You know. But some people they said, well, I need to, you know, we are 2014, almost 2014 now, and we need to find like scientific reason for behind everything. Ah, good luck. Good luck, you know. But the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Sahaba did not did not ask Rasulullah why this, why that, where's the scientific behind it, where's this one? They didn't. Abu Bakr Siddiq, he was called Siddiq because he did not have he did not have a second doubt. He did not he did not hesitate when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said to him, I'm a messenger from God, I'm a warner to you. And he says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Everybody else was like, oh, let me think about it. Every single person had a second thought. But Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he became, and that's why he is the Siddiq. As he is the Siddiq of the Ummah. The truthful of the Ummah of Rasulullah The revelation of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa reached the age of 40, he sallallahu alayhi wa would seek isolation in a cave. And this cave called the cave of Hira. And then they said where he would go and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and contemplate the universe around him. He would remain there in a cave for numbers of nights, leaving only if he ran out of food and water. And one of those nights, and we're going to read the whole hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would go. He would, and just imagine Rasulullah is running away from all this madness, running away from all this this, this uh, uh, idol worshipping and all these horrible things that people do in Mecca. He just wants to isolate himself because isolation itself is it's not a good thing. You know, it's not a good thing to isolate yourself from others. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to isolate himself and the reason behind that to leave all this madness. You know, because the vast 99% of the people during that time they was worshiping idols, they were worshiping idols. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would go and contemplate and think about the universe and think about Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then I'm saying isolation is not good. As we said today in a khutbah, you know, people sometimes get scared of others. They get scared of people and they say people are problematic. It's better to stay away from them. It's better to stay away from everybody else, you know. 
uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Khayrul nas, man amal nas wa sabar ala adham. The best of you is the one who interacts with people and he's patient. For, patient for whatever people throw at him. But he's patient. So alhamdulillah. So you shouldn't say, oh, I'm just, I better just save myself from these people and isolate myself. I better, you know, not to socialize with anybody or talk to anybody. You know, no, that's not, that's not good. It's not. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would go and he, uh, to, to the cave of Hira and then when he, when he, uh, he would, the only way that, uh, the only, uh, the only way that, uh, the only reason he would go back home is when he, he, he runs out of, 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 provision like food and water and, and he would go and he would return back to, to the cave for another um, uh, another night and Imam Bukhari mentioned this hadith and, and we'll talk about this hadith inshallah it's, it's narrated by Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha. she said the first form of revelation that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was initiated with was the good or the true dream that he would see in his sleep Every dream that he saw became realized like the right, like the light of the morning. Um, next, uh, isolation was made beloved to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and so he would isolate himself in the cave of Hera, where he would worship Allah subhanahu wa taala for a number of nights before returning to his family and getting more food and provision for the same purpose. And he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, would return to Khadija and and uh, 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 furnish himself with a quantity of provision that would last him a similar number of nights. This continued until the truth came to him وسلم, while he was in the cave of Hira, the angel Jibreel السلام, came to him and he said, read. And he answered, I'm not of those who read. And then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, later he said, he then took me and embraced me with a strong embrace until I became very much fatigued, at which point he released me. He said, read. And I said, I'm not of those who read. And then he took me, embraced me with strong embraces for a second time until I was overcome by fatigue. Again, at which point he released me and he said, read. I said, I'm not of those who read. And then he took me, embraced me with a strong embrace for the third time. And he said to me, Read in the name of your Lord, the one who has created all that exists. Sayyid Aisha continued to say that his heart trembled. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returned with them, with the revealed verses. And he entered upon Khadija bin Khuwaili radiallahu anha. And he said, cover me, cover me. And so they covered him and then when... Um, when the, the terror left him, he informed Khadija radiallahu anha about what he had taken place. And, um, and he said, I fear for myself. Khadija said, never. But Allah, Allah will never forsake you. Uh, for you, you join, tie, you join ties to of your family relation. You bear the burdens of the weak. You give to people what no one else is able to give. You, you, uh, you, inter, you entertain your, your, your guests and you help people who are afflicted with calamities. Khadija took him to her cousin, Waraqa ibn Nawfal, ibn Sa'ad ibn, Abd, ibn, Abd, ibn Abdul Uzza, for he was a man who had embraced Christianity during the days of ignorance and was able to write in Hebrew uh, language. In Hebrew, he had uh, transcript, uh, transcript from the Injil. That amount, that amount which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had will for him to transcribe. So Khadija said to him, O oh my cousin, listen to what your nephew says. And Waraqah said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh my nephew, what is that you see? After the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finished sending him what he saw, Waraqah ibn Nafil said, This is a namus whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down to Moses. I wish that I were a strong young man. I wish to be alive when your people expel you or drive you out. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, says, will they expel me out or drive me out? He says, Waraqah says, no man has ever come with what you come with except he, except that he has been treated as an enemy. If I'm alive when that day of yours comes, I will indeed support you and help you a great deal. Shortly, uh, uh, Waraqah died and the revelation led up 
the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam stopped receiving revelation for a while. This is the hadith. It's a, it's a long hadith. It's related in Bukhari. Uh, it's also in other books of hadith. And by studying or contemplating this hadith, you have to. There is a number of lessons here. There is a number of lessons. Number one, Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha. She said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would go and isolate himself. That itself actually is a ibadah. Again, they, uh, he goes to isolate him to do what? To contemplate, to reflect. You know, and this is an active ibadah that a lot of us have neglected. You know, and this, they call this ibadah, ibadah to samt. Ibadah to samt, the silence ibadah. Why? Because you don't do anything. You don't move your tongue, you don't have to talk, you don't have to recite anything, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just to sit and look at the creation around you. And think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times when you go to like a beach or something or go to, you know, a field and you see these palm trees or trees or see the water, you know, you say, Alhamdulillah, subhanAllah, look at this. How many times you drive past like mountains or something like that and you say, look at these mountains, subhan al-khalaq, glory to one who created all this. That's ibadah. That's actually is going to be the only ibadah in the last, in, in Jannah, inshallah. That's the only ibadah in Jannah. You know, you don't have to pray anymore. You don't have to, to, to fast. You don't have to do any, any, anything. All you're going to do in Jannah is that you will say, Subhanallah. And it's not like you're going to force your tongue to, to move. No, your tongue automatically will say, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Because of all the things that you're going to see around you in Jannah. You know, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Right. So ibadat al-khulwa, they call it يعني, contemplation or reflection about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually, He praised the Muslims, the mu'min, the believers. In the Quran saying, al-ladhina, in Surah Al-A'raf, I'm sorry, in Surah Al-Imran, at the end. وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ He praised the believers that they think they think, they reflect upon the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in heaven and earth. That's number one quality of the believers in Surah Al-Imran. That they contemplate. They think about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was narrated that Isa alayhi salam in Israeliyat, he said that Tuba liman kana qalbahu dhakira wa samtuhu tafakkura Tuba, good news, or Tuba, place in Jannah for the one who uh, when he talks, he spe he, he, his talk is just about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He makes a mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his silence is also tafakkur. His silence is tadabbur, reflection. You know, he's thinking about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was also narrated in Hassan Rasri said, tafakkur sa'a, just sit for one hour, just to reflect. Reflect about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than praying all night long. It's, that's according to Al-Hasan Basri you know. And, and when you, it, ha, it has a lot of merits when you sit and, and, and reflect upon the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It actually has a lot of merits. One of those merits that, you, that you're, you're, you, you will have this certainty about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we said that the people who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't believe in the existence of Allah. Just, just talk to them about the creation of Allah, really. Like Abu Hanifa. You know, Abu Hanifa and this man said to him, well, I don't believe in God. And Abu Hanifa, he says, well, how come? You know, an amazing, intelligent person like you does not believe in God. And then this man asked Abu Hanifa for a debate. And Abu Hanifa agreed. And he says, after Asr, in the masjid, in the jami, inshallah, I will come. You know, in the jami, the jami is bigger than the masjid. The masjid is just like a place to pray. Like a small prayer room. But jami is... The big masjid, you know, and every every town overseas in Muslim countries they have a jama' and they have this little masjid, you know. The jama' is the biggest masjid in the city or in the town. So he says to him, "I will meet you in the jama' inshallah." So they they Abu Hanifa intentionally he came late, and then he everybody was there, and then he said to, he intentionally came late because he wanted more people to attend and wait for him. So when he came, this man asked him, he said to him, well, uh, why you're late? And he said, well, I've, I've been thinking all day long about this uh, problem or this case. 
about that thing. And he says, what thing? He said, uh, you know, I was thinking about a ship. A ship that has goods on it. There is no captain, there's no sailor, there's no one, no one to, to drive it, there's no one to steer it, you know. And uh, subhanAllah, it goes from from A to Z, you know, it goes from the destination to a different destination, you know, safe and sound. And it has to pass all this big, huge waves. And then the man started to laugh. And he says, subhanAllah, look at you. I thought you're a wise person. How could anybody think, uh, believe in, in what he's saying? He said, subhanAllah, I feel sorry for you. I'm talking about a ship that does not have a captain or a sailor to take it from one destination to another. Huh? I'm talking about a sh just a ship in the water without a sailor to take it from a destination to another. And that was, for you, was impossible to believe. And you believed that the whole creation, not a ship, the whole creation runs by itself. You know. So think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Shafi'i radiallahu anhu and this man, Imam al-Razi came to him and he's one of his students. He says to him, uh, what is wrong with you? He said, I did not sleep last night. He says, why didn't she sleep last night? He said, I was thinking about that thing. He said, what thing? He says about Allah and where Allah came from. And Imam Shafi'i, he got really angry. And he asked him, Ya hadha, kam najman fi sama? How many stars in the sky do you know? And he said, no, I don't. And then he says, yeah, hadha. And then he started asking him a lot of questions that he can see actually around him. And then he says, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And he says, subhanAllah. So you have no answer for all these questions. And he, all these things that you can actually see with your own eyes. You go beyond that and want to know about the Creator. who cre In other words, why don't you just busy yourself with the creation first? Try to figure it out first. Try to figure out all these things that she see. I mean, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that happen right in front of us. We don't even know how it happens. We don't even know how the heart's actually, what, what makes the heart beat. We don't even know. We don't even know. Ask any doctor what, the, what, what actually, what does make the, what makes the, the heart beat. Yeah, they, they, will, they have no answer. You know, they, have, they will tell you, oh, it's a circle of whatever, electricity. I, it, useless stuff. But nobody knows. You know, you put a seed in the, in the soil and put some water off the sun in a tree. You know, sometimes you don't even have to put water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down the rain, sends, sends, He sends down the rain and that's it. You don't have to worry about it. You know, you don't have to worry about it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Waqi'ah, He says beautiful ayat, beautiful ayat. He says, Have you reflected about the things where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you from? Are you the one who created it or Allah? And then he says, Have you reflected upon the water? Because reflection, that's ibadah. Wallahi, it's ibadah. I mean water, bismillah, to drink water, alhamdulillah. You don't even know where, where the water comes from. And who actually the one, who's the, who, who, who the ones who maintains it in the clouds and send it down to us? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, لَوْ نَشَاءُ لَجَعْنَهُ أُجَاجَ And if we want, we can make that water that you drink salty and better. You won't be able to drink it. And then, أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ 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 you know, if you reflected, if you reflected upon this, if you reflected about the water, the food, about the fire, you know, about all these things. Why? Because it's ibadah. And when you learn it, you will have certainty about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, you will have certainty about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and it will cre increase your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa used to go and used to do. To go to, to the cave and just think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in that time, he, he did not know. But, you know. but he knew that there was God. And he wanted to just worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way. And there was no you know, sad of, of, of prayers that he had to, to do. Because he was not a prophet yet. 
So his ibadah is just go there and just look at the creation of Allah. Look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Imam Shafi'i, to continue the story, the, the Imam Razi, when he said that to him, he says, if the shaitan comes to your mind again and asks you all this question or, or you know, trying to trick you, just remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتِ In the creation of the heaven and the earth and the alternation between the, the day and night, there are a lot of signs. For, for who? For those who have intellect. Those who have intellect, right? So there, there are a lot of signs out there about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Everything, everything screams it out that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala there He exists. You know, so ibadah to sumt, you know, this ibadah, this act of worship, you know, reflection, the reflection about Allah and about His creation, right? So this is the first lesson that we'll learn from this, this hadith of Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu She said in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he would go and, and, and he will come back when he runs out of food and then he will come back and he will go back to, to the cave again. And then until he one night he saw Jibreel alayhi salam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa saw Jibreel in his like original form twice. That's it. He saw Jibreel alayhi salam in his original form twice. That's number one. And also the second time it was the, at the beginning of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after that he used to see Jibreel alayhi salam in the form of a human being. And sometimes he, were, he, he, would, he, would, uh, he would look like uh, Dahya al-Kalbi. One of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu And one time Rasulullah sallallahu was sitting there and then Jibreel left. And Khadija, uh, Sayyidah Aisha saw him and he asked her, do you know who is that? She said, Dihya. He says, no, that's Jibreel And you know the hadith of Jibreel, one of the most important hadith in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu When they said, Sayyidina Umar narrated this hadith, he says, a man, very handsome, very striking, wearing white clothes, he came and he sat in front of Rasulullah sallallahu and he asked him, what is Islam, what is Imam, what is Ihsan? And then he asked him about the signs of the last day. And then he left. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa after he answered, and this man left, he says, do you know who is that man? They said, no, we don't. He says, innahu Jibreel, ja'akum ya'allimukum deenakum. That's Jibreel, came to teach you your religion. Right. So he saw Jibreel alayhi salam. And Jibreel embraced the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And then he says to him, read, aqara'a. And that was the first command that this ummah must to, to learn. That the first command that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Read, read. You know, uh, it's unfortunate that nobody reads anymore. You know, people, if you, if, if, if you ask people, what do you prefer? Reading or watching a movie for two or three hours? Of course they would say movies. If you ask people to just read about anything, just about anything, or play video games, uh, I'll, I'll prefer to play video games. And before, people used to read more and more and more because we did not have TVs, we didn't have any of this, you know, uh, temptation, all the distraction. We didn't have any of them. So people actually had time to sit and read. Before, people used to have libraries in their houses. Even those who did not have money, they used to have at least a few books to read. You know, and this is something that you should actually teach your children. From day one, wallahi, from day one. And they are like few months, you have to teach them, you know, how to read. Or to, you have to read to them. They will grow with it. And... Just try to, to just close all the distraction, all the temptation from also day one. A TV, for example. Don't let your kids get used to watching, watching TV. Because that's the biggest distraction. You know? And if they grow up just watching TV, they forget it. They will not like reading. They will not like reading whatsoever. It doesn't really matter what you try after that. So I'm not saying uh, turn the TV off or just put it in a closet or don't have a TV. But at least you have to watch your kids. You have, they have to like limits. 
maybe an hour a day and that's it. You know? And it's better really to put it in a closet. <laughs> Seriously. So Tayyib, uh, that, and then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after that he ran back to who? Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha. When he saw Jibreel, when Jibreel said to him, read, 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 he ran home. He ran away and he went home. He did not go home to his, to his uncle's house. He didn't go to his friend's house. He went to his wife's. He went to his wife's house. You know, and this is just like an amazing lesson. You know, an amazing lesson. The relationship between a husband and a wife. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I think we talked about Sayyidah Khadija uh, two weeks ago about how much she loved the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and how she helped with the mission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, helped with the Messenger of Allah and all Muslims. And you cannot imagine anybody else in that situation but Khadija because she was an incredible human being. And that's why she deserved the love of the Messenger of Allah. And that's why she deserved the greeting of Allah, the greeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, some, some of us who are married for maybe for so long, you know, when, when sometimes when we have problems or husbands have problems, they don't talk to their, to their wives because there is no communications there. They don't talk to their wives. They wait for long until the, the problem is... <laughs> Is, is over and then he will say to her and sometimes women they find out by somebody else a third party maybe the mother-in-law calls by me say hey what, what do you guys how did you guys uh, what did you guys do regarding such as what problem are you talking about really <laughs> I've, I've, I, I've seen this you know I've seen it but the message of Allah وسلم, he didn't go to anybody's house but to his wife's house he ran to her and he says, Ya Khadija, لَقَدْ خَشَيْتُ عَلَى نَفْسِي I think I've lost my mind. I think I've lost my mind. I think I've seen the devil. See the response of Khadija. She says, Wallahi لَنْ يُضَيَّعَكَ اللَّهُ أَبَدًا Allahu Akbar. See, he went to her and she, the response was amazing. She said, no, no. Allah will not let you down. And not, Allah will not forsake you. Did she stop there? No, she did not stop there. And she started reminding the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with all these amazing qualities that he has. She said, you help the poor, you give the needy, you keep ties to your family. Allah will never let you down. You know, Allah will never let you down. You know, and this is just for us. It's for me, just to remind myself as well. You know, sometimes you do like, you be like doing work of da'wah and then all of a the sudden people be talking about you. People be talking ill about you. People will come to hunt your ears. People will just like, Ya Akhi, Wallahi, they will do everything. Everything. You know, to put you down. But always remember this, that, you, that, that if, if, you are, if you're sincere about this, if you're sincere about the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do it out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, and you know what you're doing, and you know that you're a good person and you possess some beautiful qualities, then don't worry. Don't worry. And don't worry about what people are going to say. Because you will never be saved from people. As the poet says, Wallahi, in sahab al mar'u jibreela, falan yaslam min qala wa min qila. The poet says, if you are a, if you are a friend to Jibreel, alayhi salam, to Jibreel, you will not be saved from people. They said about Allah, they said about the Messenger of Allah. فَكَيْفَ إِنْ قِيلَ فِيْنَا بَعْدُ مَا قِيلَ So if somebody said something about you, يعني, it's okay, let it go. But it hurts sometimes and they know it does. I know it does. But Allah will not let you down. Allah will not let you down. And this is what Khadija was trying to tell the Messenger of Allah. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been good, you know, I'm, I'm doing all these things and all of a sudden I think I've seen the devil. But she was certain, no, no, that was not the devil. That's not evil. Because a man like you, a man with all these qualities, all these amazing qualities, Allah will never let you, let, Allah will not let him down. 
And then she starts to count the the the, ni'a, the the qualities of the Master of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and she starts to comfort it. And she she comforted him, and she started like telling him, "You you good to your family. You keep ties to them. That 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 itself is enough. Enough. You know, you 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 take care of the poor. You help the needy. You're an you're an incredible human being. Allah will never let you down. And then she took him to his. Uh, to her, her, her uncle, or in some riwayat, uh, uh, her cousin, and in some riwayat, they said it was actually her uncle, Waraq ibn Nawfal. And as we read, he was a man who, that he, he called himself a Christian. He believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he asked the Messenger of Allah, Tell me what did you see? And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explained to him. And he said to him, ah, Well, this is not a doubt. In hadha an namus. This is Jibreel alayhi salam, the one who came to Moses. It's the angel who came to Moses. And you are the last prophet. And then he says, وَلَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ فِيهَا جَزْعًا I wish that I was a young man. Because your people are going to drive you out and going to treat you as an enemy. And the Master of Allah sallallahu alayhi response was, أَمُخْرِجِيَّهُمْ they were gonna, they're going to drive me out? And he was shocked. And he had the right to be surprised. Because the Master of Allah وسلم, was the most يعني, يعني, the, the, uh, uh, admired person in Mecca during that time. They used to call him As-Sadiq Al-Ameen, the trustworthy, the truthful. You know, he's from Banu Hashim. You know, he possesses all these beautiful qualities. So he had the right to be are, are they gonna? They gonna do this to me? Why? Why? You know when sometimes when you know you say to your friend, if some people say bad things about you, and then one of your friends accompanied them or said the same thing as they as as them, you get upset at your friend more than the others, right? Right? Like say a few a group of people were talking ill about you, and you found out that one of your friends was actually with them. And he believed that you are whatever they said about you. You get upset at him more than anybody else. Why? Huh? Your friend. Because he's your friend. He, he, he knows you better than this. And that's what people say. Right? That's what people say. I, I, I didn't expect it from you. I would take it from anybody else, but not you. Because we had this relationship. We we known one another for a long time, so the Master of Allah was just, just the same thing. Why would they do this? They know very well. They know me very well, you know. And then he says yes, <laughs> because you know uh, no man has ever come with what he came with except his people who will treat him as an enemy. And the Master of Allah sallallahu alaihi that's his yani, that's the, the warning. That nothing is easy. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. You know, sometimes you get in a, a certain type of work or something, and you think it's easy. Or maybe you just like get like uh, promoted or something, and you feel like life is, is getting better. But no, it's not. It's actually getting more stressful. You know? And that's just like a lesson for us to know that there is no such thing called comfort in this life. Comfort, inshallah, in Jannah. So when you put your step, first step in Jannah, and you feel comfortable, that's it. That's it. But to think that, you know, things are easy in this dunya, no, it's not. You know, things are not easy. You know. And uh, so anyways, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he... he uh, um, uh, Sayyida Khadija and him, they went back home and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam start the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before we finish, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even before he, he, uh, before he, he received a revelation, as we said, Sayyida Aisha said actually, and we read the hadith in the beginning, she said that he start like, uh, 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 he loved to, he would seek uh, isolation, and isolation was made beloved to him. And also, she said a true dream, everything that he would see in the, in, at night, it will happen next morning. And the dreams are like, there are three types of dreams. 
the ru'ya, when you see something good, say that you saw the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. Some of us have seen some of the Prophets, you know, uh, Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Isa and Sayyidina Ibrahim. Some of us saw the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam with another Prophet in their dreams. Some of us saw some of the family members of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, or you just see like somebody who's giving you glad tidings. And then you get up, you get up in the morning if you are in a state of stress or something, you feel like, you know, relieved a little bit. You feel a little bit comfortable. You know, that's ru'ya. That's ru'ya. You know, sometimes when you are, you're, you're, you're really, really stressed out, and you see the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that means your, your stress will be removed. You know, so you get up in the morning and feel like very comfortable. That you saw the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in your dream. He hugged you or he tapped in your shoulder or he kissed you or something like that. It's amazing. That's amazing, you know. And then uh, the second thing is a, uh, a dream that, 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 that you dream about the things that you think about during the day. Like somebody who's thinking about a lot of things or one certain thing during the day. You know, an exam, for example, and this happens a lot to students. And they think a lot about exams, you know, am I going to pass it or not? Oh, I'm worried. I don't know what I'm going to do. They usually dream about it. They usually dream about it at night, you know. That means nothing. That dream just absolutely means nothing. And the third dream is an evil dream. And what people call kaboos, nightmare. And that's from the shaitan. That's from the shaitan. And the shaitan and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you see something like that, do not talk to others about it. If you see a kaboos or a nightmare, don't talk to people about it. Because it's an evil thing. You know, it's an evil thing. Sheikh Kishk, rahimahullah, uh, uh, they said he died after he made, uh, in a Friday morning, before he, before he, uh, before he went to do uh, the khutbah, he, 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 he took a shower and then he came out and, uh, and, and he was praying two rak'at before he goes to the masjid. And then his wife, and he told his wife, I've seen a dream. She said, what dream? He said, uh, I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, he had somebody with him. And then I knew, and I recognized the messenger of Allah. And I was so happy. And he says, don't you know this man? I said, no. He says, this is Umar. Give him salam. And then he said, I give him salam. And all of a sudden, I dropped dead. And then she said, uh, he said, then they both, they, bo they both left, uh, carried me and they washed my body. And his wife started crying. She says, aren't you the one who always tell people don't talk about bad dreams and nightmares? And he says, who said that's a nightmare? Who said that's, that's a bad dream? And subhanAllah, he, he ate a little bit and then he went to, to pray two rak'ahs, which he usually do before he goes to give the khutbah. And he died in the sujood. Yeah, he died in the sujood. And subhanAllah, this man, he used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. When you listen to his uh, recordings, like the, the old tapes, he always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take a soul when he's in a state of sujood. And that's how he actually died. Inshallah, we'll continue next week, inshallah. جزاكم الله خيرا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم اجعل هذا الجميع جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا حولنا ولا خلفنا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على قوم الكافرين